Hello, everyone. I hope you're all starting a great 2024 so far. I'm pretty sure that many investors are happy with the S&P 500 rallying more than 15% in the past two, three months. But on the other end, I'm sure some are worried about whether we will have a major pullback or even if we will have a recession soon. So in these situations, I thought it would be very helpful for my subscribers to hear from experts that have been very successful with their investments and have gone through several market crashes. So today I have the honor to speak with Todd Baba. Chief Market Strategist at BabaTrading.com, and I'm really excited to hear what he has to say about the market in 2024. So, Todd, thank you very much for your time today, and it is really great to have you on the channel. Andrew, great to be with you. It's my pleasure to be a part of your show. All right, thank you. Now, a few months ago in 2023, the market was falling hard, and in the case of the S&P 500, the index even went under the 200 SMA at one point. But in the recent two three months, the S&P 500 has rallied over 15 percent, which I think surprised a lot of investors, even for those that were expecting the Santa rally. Now. We do know that the Fed came out and said that they are planning to cut the Fed fund rates more than, I guess, three times uh, in 2024. And the CPI is coming down, although it's still, in my opinion, uh, way higher than the 2%. But do you think the economy is actually recovering and we are starting a new long-term bull rally? Or do you think this is a major bull trap that may hurt a lot of retail investors? I think this is a very dangerous market right now. I think when you look at the big picture, we did have a huge rally. In fact, the Nasdaq rallied about 25% for the fourth quarter of the year. We are extremely overbought in these conditions. However, you cannot get in front of the market and say, well, it's time it's going to sell off. I do believe it's going to sell off. In fact, I will say, and I've said this for the last year almost, there's going to be a 50 to 60% haircut here at some point. But again, that doesn't mean it's today. And I'm not predicting that it's going to be today. And, and full disclosure, I'm always long equities anyways. I don't get out. I have a hedging program that I hedge my equities and I trade, I day trade. And right now my positions, as much as I am bearish emotionally, I'm still bullish the market based on the tape, based on the action that is being priced in here. I don't believe that the Fed is going to cut this year. I think that that has been a, a big selling point and why the markets have been running. People believe that's going to happen, but Jerome Powell has never clearly come out and said that they're going to cut a number of times this year. He's talked about it. If he is correct that inflation is falling, which I don't believe it is, but if he's correct, then how is he going to, how are they going to cut rates? What is the reasoning behind cutting rates? So you got to, you're in a real big trick box here, but but when you look at government numbers in general, they're normally phony numbers. And again, it doesn't matter who's in power, who's in office. The numbers themselves are not necessarily accurate. You look at the CPI, which you mentioned, the CPI only accounts for 4% of food and energy. Now, unless you have an emergency, I guarantee you the average American spends more than 4% for food and energy on their goods and services every month. So again, the CPI is, is a garbage number. It has absolutely no meaning. It is a government reported number, very similar to the jobs, which is not valued and always adjusted the next month out. So you think we are already in a recession? I think we've been in a recession for the last six or seven or eight months. Again, wow. a market rally doesn't doesn't mean you're not in a recession. What it means in a recession is can people afford to go out and eat? Can they afford to spend money? And, and maybe they are spending money, but who's really doing the spending? Okay. You go to the restaurant, you're not seeing the average American middle class and there. You're seeing that people have some dough because people who have money are not affected by recessions. If you've got real liquid cash and real capital, recessions are actually a benefit to you. You get to take advantage of the recession and buy things at reduced prices. The average middle class, the working person who's making I don't know what the right rate is today, but let's say $75,000 a year. They're not out spending. They're lucky that they can pay their bills right now. So this is something I'm really interested to hear from you. But uh, personally, I'm looking at you know a lot of indicators of what's happening in the economy, not the stock market. And what I see personally is that the credit card debt is the highest. And as you say, if the Fed fund rate keeps its high rate for quite some time, um, you know, we have the commercial real estate debt refinancing coming. And I think the banks, the bonds, you know, they bought a lot of bonds at a lower rate, the yield, and the banks are in trouble. And <sighs> I heard that 70% of the loans for their commercial real estate are from regional banks, small banks. Well, listen, so if, you, you, you've, nailed, you've nailed the picture perfectly. Credit card debt, forget about the number, because again, dollars are dollars. You know, when I started trading, the Dow was 800, today it's 38,000. But there, there's never been a time in history when more families had at least one credit card at limit than ever. The emergency lending window, which is the Federal Reserve, the emergency lending rate, has never been more crowded with banks borrowing money from the Federal Reserve. So now we've got banks that are over leveraged. We've got the consumer that's over leveraged. We've got interest rates that are rising. 
and the entire economy is out of control, which can only lead to one thing when it's all said and done. It's got to lead to a market collapse. Now, again, the when is, is always the question. There are warning signs every single day. From the epic move we had in gold a few weeks ago, when it went up like 100 bucks in a day, okay, to other little things that nobody pays attention to because unfortunately, the average investor doesn't care about anything until it affects them directly. And when it affects them directly, by that time, it's already too late to, to act to what's going to happen. So when you say affect them directly, I'm also looking at the massive layoffs and unemployment rate. And personally, what I think is, you know, people are living on their credit card debt right? Yeah. But they're living because they have a job and the paychecks coming in. But mm -hmm. I see a lot of layoffs coming in. Like today, Amazon was cutting you know, a lot of employees as well. But if that happens, is that a major sign that you see that? Will I think that's already playing out. I mean, we've already seen them. How many times in your life, and you're pretty young, but how many times have you ever seen Amazon lay off during Christmas? Okay. Meta's already laid off a lot of employees. Google's laying off employees. Everybody's lying off employees because A, either they don't need them or they don't have the business to support them. We've lost the commercial real estate market, which you're talking about coming up for lending. Who goes to the office anymore? How many people go into the major cities to go to work anymore? It doesn't happen. So the dynamics and the, and the economy have changed. But again, until it comes and it affects your pocketbook and it affects your family, you're not really looking at it because you're, listen, if you're looking at what's going on in the, in the economy, you should be storing your nuts. You should be putting your money away and not out spending at restaurants because the storm has not even started yet. And you can already see a lot of problems out there. How would you explain the economy? I, I kind of understand what you're saying about the economy. And I, I totally agree. But how can you explain the market going up so high? Is it hype or is it just expectation, optimism? Well, it's a little bit of everything. Remember, first of all, markets are predisposed to go higher anyways. They go up on average 8.5% year over year since the history of the beginning of time. Okay, number one. Number two, there's an overwhelming amount of money in the money supply. You know, the government or the Fed has created so much money that's out there, it's got to go somewhere. So it's going to go into the market. So between IRAs, 401ks, and companies that are putting money in, they're going to feed the market. And what we really have here is we have a lack of participation. Take a look at the volume compared to historical volume. We're at about 50% of normal. So right now you have buyers buying without the participation of sellers. I would suggest, and my opinion is, is that the sellers are going to show up and the sellers will show up in the form of Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, the big guys when they're ready. But right now, it's kind of like a boxer in a, in a match. Carry the guy for a couple of rounds so you can put on a good show, and then we're going to knock him out. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen in this economy. They're going to carry the economy for a while. They're going to continue to let it go higher. And then, bang, one day you're going to walk in, and they're going to start selling it. And people are going to go, wait a second. I can just buy the dip. That's all I've ever done. Okay. And they're going to sell a little further. And then, of course, we go into the pandemonium. And, and of course, the fear strikes out. And then everybody pukes it out to the bottom. And then you get the reverse rally later. But that, that's the way I would see it. So just because the markets are going up doesn't mean that we're not in a recessionary time. It doesn't mean that there isn't problems. Because, again, they're not necessarily correlating today. The other thing that I think will be very helpful is I'm pretty sure that the majority of investors that are watching this video has not gone through an actual major recession. Even for myself, I haven't gone through 08 or 09. But can you share if you felt this optimism or hype or melt up before the dot com bubble or the great financial crisis? And do you kind of somewhat feel the similarity that we're seeing right now compared to right before the past recession? I, I would call this almost exactly the same scenario. Again, nothing, nothing is exactly the same. But to me, this is like the exact same scenario. I mean, people are buying like they can never go down. I mean, I did trade through, I did trade on the floor through 87. I did trade in the floor through the 90s when the internet bubble struck. So I'm very familiar with these bubbles. And again, the problem with the bubbles is it's hard to say when it's over. You have to participate with the market until you have a reason not to participate. And anybody who's trying to fight this market, which many are, are end up losing their money because again, the market will overpower you. Remember, the stock market itself is an inanimate object, right? It, it is driven by buyers and sellers. Well, there is a lack of sellers right now. So the buyers are totally dominating the market, even though the volume is late. It doesn't matter because if you're shorting the market, you're losing money and you're going broke. You have to allow it to trade and wait for your opportunity. Now, if you choose and you say, you know what, I can't take the being long anymore. I'm too afraid. There's no problem with it. I don't, I don't agree, but hey, you can send the sidelines, but you should not sell early. Anytime you either sell something short or sell something you own because you want to take the profit, you should have a reason, not a hunch, not a news item, not some jackass on TV, you know, yelling and screaming to sell, sell, sell. 
it's you have to have a reason did, did, did something change in the reason that you bought that company or that investment okay if nothing changed why sell it you'll have plenty of time to sell you know everybody thinks that these big collapses take one day these big collapses work out over time you will have plenty of time to liquidate out of your positions if you choose to the real problem is most people won't when it comes time to do so they want to try to catch it on the way up which is the wrong way to go it's the old saying amateur traders want to be right professional traders want to make money so the amateurs want to be right and they want to predict professionals... the market they want to try to predict when the top's going to be in it and i'm telling you as a 45 year professional i could never tell you when the top's going to be in so then in your case even if you're predicting uh, a major crash are you still 100 percent in the stock market or do you have 100 percent a... long the market right now i am hedged so let's, let, let's be clear i have a program that hedges automatically so I, I know the exact amount of risk i am taking at any given time okay and i will buy more as the market goes down but i'm playing what we call the long game right i'm playing that the market's going up eight and a half percent year over year so that side of my investing side i'm invested i'm always 100 percent invested my trading side i am long right now because that's what my algorithms tell me to be that the market is still going higher so why would i want to be short when the market's going higher look at the markets today the nasdaq's up another 125 today so after last week's about five percent or so sell-off we've recovered all those losses already so based on the charts or the indicators are, are there specific indicators that you kind of focus on or keep an eye on that makes you feel confident if you look at the markets the market will basically work in three phases it'll consolidate which is go sideways it'll break out to a trend either up or down and eventually most trends end with what they call a blow off or a panic either a panic up or a panic down so if you look at that but if, if, if any of you wants to watch something that'll help them i mean the bollinger bands are about as easy and as simple as it gets it's a mathematical indicator that works off of two standard deviations up and down okay and they'll tell you when a market is oversold or overbought but i warn anybody who uses those type of indicators that just because a market is either oversold or overbought doesn't mean it's a sale or a buy because they can extend longer and farther than you think and if you're watching the mean the mean will go with the direction of the market but it is a guide to help you make a final decision if you need a guide to use again i don't use it but that is one of the better indicators if you're going to use something i know this might be a little tough question but personally what do you think may be the critical event that may trigger a major pullback or a recession in, in your opinion well i think it's, i think it'll be the banks collapsing again i think there'll be trouble with the banks i, I think that's a pretty that's actually not that hard i think that's pretty easy from my point of view. You know, based on the FOMC meetings, we hear a lot on the news that the soft landing is working, the inflation is coming down, you don't have to worry and all that. Um, but personally, do you think that we will have a soft landing or do you think we need a hard landing, a reset in the market for a healthy bull market? Uh, well, I think we back? need to sell off. To, I, I think we need to get rid of the Federal Reserve. That's the first step, that's step number one. Well, I, I do think you should end the Fed. You know, what, what organization is not subject to being ended or audited? Okay. I mean, they do whatever they want. So that's number one. But I, I tell everybody this, this is my, my way of viewing it. Look at your own bank account. Look at your own spending. If your life is great, then you have nothing to worry about. Okay. But I would venture to say that most people are struggling of the middle class, which is let's, let's face it. The middle class is the biggest percentage of the country. So if you're struggling to pay your bills, or if you're struggling, then that tells you the shape of the economy, no matter what the Fed says. Remember, whatever, when everybody says it doesn't matter, because it's a really, wow, what is my life like? Okay. You know, I mean, I've got two kids that are, you know, 28 and 30. I mean, they make good money, but they're telling me that the times are tough and they make a lot of money. I mean, they make a lot more than the average minimum wage. I mean, the average wage of an American, they make more than most 50 year olds. But again, at the end of the day, they're telling me that it's tough. So if they're telling me it's tough with the kind of money they make, it's got to be pretty tough for the average guy on the street or the average woman on the street. And to me, that should be your answer, not what the government says or not what the Federal Reserve says. What does your bank account say? What does your spending habits tell you? And can you still take care of and feed your kids? Wow, that's a that's a great insight. That's a great way to think about it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. I think my last question is, as you know, Bitcoin is going up a lot. And I think there's controversy in the space where, you know, uh, investors like Warren Buffett say that Bitcoin is a scam, it's going to go eventually to zero, whereas investors like Kathy Wood or Bill Ackman think positive and think it's here to stay for the future. But I'm very curious to see uh, here if you're invested in crypto or what, what's your thought about the whole crypto First space? First of all, let's talk about Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is full of crap. He owns Bitcoin through other holdings, okay? Warren Buffett is the man who got all bent out of safe when, they, when we had all that tax problems 
okay? And when they were relocating to save taxes. So let's not listen to what he says about that, okay? Bitcoin, I think, is real, okay? I don't have a lot. I've got whatever I have, I'm willing to let it go to zero, right? So I tell everybody, first of all, if you're going to play in this space, be prepared to lose it all. I am a believer. I do think it's real, okay? I think it's going to be a real product. I'm really sorry that I didn't get in from the beginning. Uh, I had a partner who didn't want to participate, didn't believe in it. So I chose to be with him and not invest in it. But I am invested in it. And you know, again, I've got X amount of dollars, which if it goes to zero, it'll go to zero. There's a lot of different ways to play it through either the ETFs or through the actual Bitcoin itself or, or Ethereum, you know, whichever one you choose. Just make sure you don't play with the crap, okay? You know, use the ones that are majors, the ones that have a, you know, a, a billion dollar market cap or more, you know, something in those neighbors. I mean, again, you got to make sure it's real, but it, the concept is real. No central bank intervention, 24 hours a day, trading seven days a week, free markets, nobody intervening in it, a certain X amount of quantity, what gold was supposed to be, but gold and silver were supposed to be back in the day. So I do believe it and I do think it's real. I just would be very careful, especially at these levels. I mean, I think there's a greater probability that you'll see a pretty good sell-off. I think a lot of this buildup right now is into the new ETF that's coming out and all that stuff. But again, I'm a big believer overall, and I do think that it will continue to go higher. And there's a lot of different ways to play it through either like, I I own BitQ, which is a little minor company. I own Bido, which is the actual ETF that represents the future. I own the real Bitcoin, okay? I trade the futures all the time. So again, there's ways to play it for less expensive amounts of money if you wanna be in and be a participant in this. I do think it's real. I think it will be something that'll be used as stored value. Uh, very similar to gold at some point. And I do believe as we've seen some countries go to it as a currency. So I think that it is a, is something real to look at for anybody. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm really excited to see what happens, you know, this week with the Bitcoin uh, ETF. But um, I'm also a believer of Bitcoin. I have a lot of uh, cryptocurrency. I'm sure you have so. a lot more than me. I'm sure you've done very well with it because your you're younger people have you know understood the technology better, and I think that's a good thing. Wow, I think we went through a lot of very important topics and great insights, and I really appreciate that. But you know, before we wrap up the interview, can you share with the subscribers on how they might find you, or how you're helping investors, or you, how you're sharing your researches? And I have a website, babatrading.com. They're welcome to go there. You can sign up for my free reports that I put out there. I do a daily update every day for about 90 seconds or two, uh, two minutes. They can email me directly if they have any questions at bubba at bubbatrading.com. And if anybody's really interested in trading, uh, I'm going to make an offer on your show if you don't mind. I have written two books that are on Amazon, but I have PDF files of both of them. And I would be happy to give uh, Bubba's Guide to Trading Options away to free for any of your subscribers or watchers. All I have to do is email me at bubba at bubbatrading.com and I'll be happy to give them a PDF file of my book that is on Amazon right now. Wow. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure that will help uh, a lot of investors. <laughs> All right. So Todd, uh, thank you very much today for your time. This was, this was, you know, one of the best uh, interviews that I had and I learned so much. And again, thank you for your time. And I would love to have you back on our show, you know, in, in the mid 2024 and see how the market does. Andrew, I'm always available for you. Let me know. I'll make time for you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate All it. Right.